All right, we're continuing section 2.3, which was about deductive reasoning. And today we're actually going to talk about deductive oh, okay. reasoning. Um, there's two main types of reasoning. There's deductive reasoning and there's inductive reasoning. And I want to make sure that we understand the difference between these. Deductive reasoning uses facts, definitions, and accepted properties in a logical order to write a logical argument. This is what mathematicians love. This is what we crave because we want the facts. We want to use those definitions and those properties that we've talked about to be able to write a logical order to make a logical argument. So typically in mathematics, this is what you're going to see when we're talking about proving things to be true. We want to have the cold hard facts. We want to be able to do something from the information we have. When I think of, when I think of this, I think, like, when you're saying all that, Ms. Hellgraby, some of the things that pop in my head is, like, a, when a lawyer is in a courtroom. Uh -huh. They have to have fa hard facts. If they have any gaps in their case, they're probably going to lose their case. Exactly. They have to have things to support, and it's got to be logical, convincing. And that's what deductive reasoning really is. It's you have to prove, show, this is what we're going to really get, dig deep the rest of this chapter as well as a lot this semester. Absolutely. Now, inductive reasoning is a little different. It's using previous examples and patterns to form a conjecture. We talked mm. about conjectures before. And conjectures, again, they're not just a random hypothesis of what we think maybe could happen. It is using some examples and it is using some patterns that we see to be able to come up with our prediction of we think this might happen all the time. This this reminds me of our very first day in here. Yeah, exactly. Like we, we did this. We looked at some examples, looked for a pattern, and came up with kind of an, a general conclusion of what we thought was going to happen. Sometimes our conjectures were not true. We had to adjust it, but sometimes they were. Right. So... Yeah, that's the difference. One is based off of facts, we know it's true. The other one, we're assuming it to be true or we're trying to make a guess of, we think this might be true. You more, there's probably more gaps in inductive reasoning as well. Definitely more gaps. Now, with deductive reasoning, which is what is going to be our primary focus in this course, there are two laws to, that you want to get familiar with. Um, I wouldn't necessarily stress about the symbolic form of this. We're going to actually do some examples with you and talk you through this um, and it's going to be very clear. Law of detachment, what it says, it says if P implies Q. Now that P implies Q. That was our conditional is statement. Is a conditional statement and even notice it says it is a true conditional statement. So basically they're going to give you an if-then statement that's true. Okay. They're going to tell you it's true. And P is also true. Now, what does the P represent? The hypothesis. So they're telling you the conditional is true and also the hypothesis is true, right? Okay. Then what you can then say is that Q is going to be true, and Q represents your conclusion, right? Correct. So the way to think about detach law of detachment, the kind of think about the word detachment. You're kind of separating it out, detaching it. Okay. So you're starting with the big thing, the whole sentence, the conditional statement. You're breaking it down and saying, okay, the hypothesis is also true. And then you're going to break it down and saying the conclusion is also true. This almost seems like a no-brainer here. Yeah. Where, of course, if the whole statement's true, if I know that the hypothesis is true, then it should make sense that the conclusion is true. Yes. That, you can deduce that. That's why exactly. it's deductive reasoning. Exactly. Okay. No, All right. No gap there. Now, the law is syllogism. Try to say that 10 times fast. <laughs> syllogism, 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 syllogism. I've said this word before. All right. <laughs> she did pretty good. You guys try it. So, law of syllogism <laughs> is, states if P implies Q and Q implies R. Now, something right away I see is they're throwing another oh, variable. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but the, they both have a Q. Is that the same Q? Yes. Okay. So notice it says these are both true conditional statements. So some of you might be questioning, well, how is that a conditional statement? Can conditional statements have the same symbolic form? Well, this is another conditional statement because it's going along with this. We can't use Q implies P because then that would be a converse statement. Right. 
And I can't use another P than Q if it's a different statement. Exactly. Okay, kind of like just normally we're used to seeing variables representing a specific piece. Exactly. Sometimes I have an X, sometimes I have a Y. Exactly. Okay. But what Mrs. Hograby noticed, which is great, and hopefully you guys are seeing this too, is that both of them contain the Q. Notice how this conditional statement, the Q is actually the conclusion, where in this con conditional statement, it's the hypothesis. hypothesis. What they're saying, based on this law, is if you have two conditional statements where one ends and the other one begins with that, you can create a whole brand new conditional statement that's also true. Okay. Okay. So, what are you noticing about the brand new in symbolic form? We're going to put this in using words that will be a little more clear, hopefully. What do you notice in this symbolic form? Where this came from, these it's, two true yeah. conditional statements. Well, it's the first one's um, hypothesis is going with the second one's conclusion. And so it's just cutting out all the, the parts they have in common. Yeah. And but the, they have to have one conclusion being matched with one hypothesis. Exactly. It can't be two conclusions matched together, right? Exactly. It's, okay. It's where one, basically where one ends, the other one's going to begin. It's kind of like you're pushing them together. You're yeah. forming one another true conditional statement because of the fact that these have in common and you can kind of get rid of that in a sense. Okay, that makes sense. 